Stand and we'll get a mic to you. Right here. Yeah, a big topic from a, a lot of other, the uh, younger coaches today have been just how the SEC has just changed so much or how they've seen the SEC be more competitive. Obviously, you've been here longer than a lot of these guys. So has, how have you seen the league change over your t tenure as the Auburn head coach? Well, if you, if you add my six years at Tennessee and then my three years in sabbatical, that's after I got fired at Tennessee, and then my going into my 10th year at Auburn, I've actually been coaching basketball longer than anybody in the league. Um, I'm really proud of the SEC. I'm proud of this league. Um, I remember coming into Tennessee, and obviously you know, Kentucky was, was the dominant program, and Billy Donovan had Florida right there. And then everybody else was sort of just everybody else. And, um, and then when I came back you know, to Auburn, um, the league had already begun to start to, to uh, get deeper, and there just became greater commitments from athletic directors, fan bases. Uh, it started, I think, with the quality of the coaching. Um, there, there's just, uh, there are so many great coaches, and maybe there was a time when other great coaches from other conferences just didn't come to the SEC because it was a football conference or something else. And, but that's not the case now. Uh, facilities have improved. Uh, everybody's drawing. Everybody's got great home court advantages. Um, we've begun, like in the last, you know, I think four or five years, we've put more guys in the NBA than anybody else, uh, than any league. And that stuff matters as far as recruiting is concerned. And, you know, the best players, iron sharpens iron. They want to play against the best players. So I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the SEC. I'm proud of leadership. I'm proud of what Mike Slive said he wanted to do and what he, what he really worked to try to get started and what Commissioner Sankey has continued uh, to do. James Fletcher from On3. Uh, we've seen more and more mid-major prospects come up to the high major level, and you've got some JUCO guys even making the jump. What does that do for the variance in kind of your possible outcomes throughout a season when you are relying on guys to make that leap coming into a season? Well, I'm not sure I, don't see, I'm not sure I understand the question, uh, but I'll try to answer what I think you're asking um, in the sense that um, if, if you've got a young man that, that, that was in mid-major basketball, he was seen by most of us in high major, most likely. Maybe he wasn't quite big enough or fast enough. His skill level wasn't quite there. He didn't rise to the level of a power five caliber prospect. And then he goes to that level. He gets coached. He's in the weight room. He gets better. He grows a couple inches. And next thing you know, as a 21-year-old junior to be at mid-major, you now have to evaluate him compared to what you could get from a, a top 100 high school player who's 18 years old. And the bottom line is that 21-year-old has got a lot of advantages, both in experience and, 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 uh, and just in ability, um, size, toughness, so on and so forth. So I think what you're seeing is everybody trying to get old and trying to stay old. And um, we saw that with the exception of UConn. We saw that in the Final Four. And, um, and so that's, th that's the, 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 the result now will be, rather than me bringing in three or four high school players in each class and then maybe a transfer. I think the reality we bring in one or two high school players and then fill the roster up with, with transfers. And uh, you know, transfer is a word like agent or even lawyer sometimes. So those of you that are lawyers, my, my athletic director I think has got a lawyer background. I give him a hard time about that all the time. It's got a bad word. A great lawyer, where there's weight in gold. A great agent, pays for what he's able to do for you. I transferred, uh, you know, from Division II to mid-major. I transferred from Wisconsin-Milwaukee mid-major to Tennessee. Um, this is the land of opportunity. And so I was blessed to be able to take advantage of some opportunities and transfer up. And so I'm happy for my Division II players and my junior college players and my mid-major players who are hungry and, and feel blessed to have been able to earn the right to be able to play at the highest level. Hey, Bruce, you said last week you were kind of getting close to rounding out a starting lineup. What was kind of your thought process on wanting to do that at this stage in the preseason, and have you, have you made your way there this week? Um, 
You know, I told the team last week that I was going to be letting them know this week um, who the starting five was. You know, I've not been asked by one player. We've got so much parity and so much competition in each position. I'm not sure they want to know, which I think is a good thing. Um, I don't, the, the bad thing is when the ball gets tossed, our Sign here in Birmingham was for March Madness. That was a big thing for the city. Alabama, Auburn here. How has basketball grown? When you think of those two teams, football is what comes to mind, but now it's it's turning into basketball as well, big time. Well, Kevin Skarbinski was writing about this for years when I first got the job, and 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 oftentimes reminds us here in the state of Alabama of when Gene Bartow was at UAB and when Wimp was at Alabama, when Sonny was at Auburn. Basketball in the state of Alabama was in a pretty good place. It was great competition, great coaches, the fan bases. Um, and, and, and I've sort of tried to pick up on that since I got to Auburn. And uh, I don't know exactly what the, the math is. Marlene would probably know more than me. But I think if you look at the last few regular season SEC tournament champions, I think in Auburn and Alabama, those two schools are going to be on that list in the last six years more than anybody total. Um, did you think that you would be able to say that six years ago? And so I, I, I take great pride in being able to help contribute you know, to that. Um, look at the job that Andy's doing at UAB right now, uh, what Nate's doing at Alabama, and we've, become, we've been a competitive program um, and all, throughout, all throughout the state. I don't know that I've seen it trickle down into high school yet. We're so good in football and baseball that those Beth athletes in those communities still tend to, to go in that direction. But... But certainly, I think it's allowed all of us to be able to recruit locally and nationally to maintain a level of competitiveness. And I'm proud of it. Broom was uh, selected preseason uh, All-SEC. You brought him here today. What, what does he mean to your team, and how important is it to bring back so much leadership and, and veteran mindset? Well, really glad for Janai, going back to the rule, the transfer question. You know, he's at Moorhead State. He's, he's uh, one of the best players in that league. Um, and the question is, will it translate? And then last year he was second team all conference. This year preseason first team, and 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 he answered that question. Uh, he's an old school front line player. Um, you know, he he looks like he'd play in a men's league for the next 20 years. You know, throw him the ball on the block. He's going to up and under. He's going to fake. He's going to he can use either hand. Uh, he's going to score. He's going to get fouled. We're going to go through him. People are going to double team him, so he's going to have to kick it out a little bit. Um, and, um, and he's got some maturity, and uh, he's worked at his game. His, his body, he's lighter. He's moving a little bit better. I think he can impact the game a little bit more on the defensive end. And, um, and so, and, you know, last year he took a run at the NBA, and he did something that not many guys are able to do. He got invited to the G League Combine and then was only – was picked as only one of a handful of guys that actually got to go to the Combine, and he played well. And I think there was a chance that he could have been a late second-round pick last year. Um, so he's worked hard to put himself in that position. And um, I think if you take a look at Janai and Dylan Cardwell, and then you take a look at Jalen Williams, who will be a fifth-year graduate student at Auburn now, right? When Jalen Williams wins his next basketball game, he will become the winningest player in Auburn basketball history. And we just started this season. Um, and so we're very excited for Jalen. And then, and then uh, Chaney Johnson is a Division II player who is one of the better players in Division II, and he is going to be one of the better players in our league this year or next. Um, and so I, I really like my front line. I love our depth. Tucker, the athletic, you joined the course today of saying get old, you know, stay old. Uh, they got it from me, so does, they joined does, my does, course. Does that make John Calipari the craziest person in college basketball now? Going, he's got eight freshmen, two sophomores, and two seniors. 
in the yeah. oldest, maybe the oldest year we've seen. Yeah, but those kids are all five stars. They're all, all McDonald's All Americans, and they're all in the top, you know, 20 in the draft board. So nobody's feeling sad for John. <laughs> Bruce C.L. Brown with the Louisville Courier Journal. Um, uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, a lot of years in this preseason, Kentucky has kind of been, it's been Kentucky in the field in the SEC, but that's no longer the case now. What, what do you feel like has been the biggest key, I guess, for so many other different programs to kind of be on that level now? Well, first of all, I got to tell you that there's nowhere I go in the SEC where I'm more honored to step on the floor than Rupp. You know, I, I honestly sometimes feel like I'm not worthy to have the opportunity to coach in that building with that history in front of those fans. Um, so Kentucky has and will lead the way in men's basketball in the SEC. Um, that's never going to change. But what has changed is um, there have just been more programs that have, that have invested it and taken it more seriously. Um, the game has grown um, and, 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 and the SEC has grown along with it. You know, I remember, I remember again, going back to what Mike Slive and, and Greg Sankey talked about, we're winning, we're, you know, we're the best conference in America and whoever is second is second by a long shot. And I'm talking about men and women's sports, I'm talking about all sports, you, you know, just look at the championships. Um, but in men's basketball, it just quite hadn't, it hadn't, um, hadn't evolved that way. And uh, they, really, they really made a commitment you know, to it. So great coaches, better facilities, uh, we're recruiting better players, um, and, 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 and we're playing, we, we made some, you know, we've got a commissioner, a commissioner now of basketball when, uh, when Dan came in and now Garth is here. Um, so we've had, you know, we, we hired people that, that, that were involved in a big East. Mike Trangisi was an advisor for a while. Uh, we, we would get advisors on officiating from great NBA officials. In other words, the league went ahead and said, look, we got to figure this out. And so they brought in really good administrators to help Commissioner Sankey kind of figure out how do we need to schedule? You know, what tournaments do we need to play in? You know, what do we, what do we need to do to elevate our brand? And they've, they've, they've done it. Uh, and the SEC Network. The SEC Network also kind of came in about the same time that, that basketball started to improve. So I, I, I think there's a direct correlation to our contract with ABC, ESPN, and, and the SEC Network. Johnny Kahn, then ABC 3340 Sports in Birmingham. Bruce over here. Um, you guys get a big transfer in Denver Jones coming up from FIU. We had a chance to watch him play down the road at Bartow against UAB. I think he scored 22 in that game. For fans of Auburn that haven't had an opportunity to watch that kid play yet, what is he bringing to your ball club, and uh, how much are you going to rely on him to carry the load offensively? So, again, again, I think your questions have been really, really good. I think they've been spot on. Like, to give me a chance to talk about Denver Jones, to give me a chance to talk about Chaney Johnson, a Division II player, think about Denver Jones. He grows up in Huntsville, Alabama. Is, is one of them. So I'm excited for him in his first college game against Baylor. I mean, I'm excited for him when we play an exhibition game, uh, you know, coming up in a, in a couple of weeks because you're going to see a guy that can shoot it, that can score it, that can defend it. And those guys just come in and they're, 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 they're humble and they're grateful. They want to be coached and, they, and, and they've been at those different levels. They've been in a lot of buses and they've been in a lot of vans. And, um, you know, they've had a lot of McDonald's for pregame meals. And now it's finally, he's finally worked to a place where I just, as I'm excited that Auburn's going to give him the opportunity to let him show what he can do. Bruce, we've talked about the non-conference schedule and, and what Virgo <laughs> set you guys up with this year, but starting the year with Baylor in South Dakota, I think yeah. it's the first time Auburn has started a game with a power season with a power conference team since 89. I mean, what, what do you how'd think? That, how'd that go at 89? Uh, it was part of a tournament, uh, let's see, 92-79 uh, against Michigan State. That was, was that a loss or a win? Loss. 
Figured. Uh, but it was, you know, it's, it's a little different, obviously, for Auburn to start with a team like right. this. What, what are you expecting to get out of a trip right. like that? So how do I, Baylor? with the league being where it's at, how do I stay relevant? How do I keep Auburn basketball relevant in this incredible league? I got to go out and schedule. I got to go play Baylor in South Dakota and put it on ESPN and let my kids have a chance. Now, let me tell you, I take great responsibility in our non-conference. No team in the SEC in the last six years has won more non-conference non games in Auburn. Okay, we've had a couple of really big wins. But at the same time, can I put my conference at risk by going out there and playing Baylor in that situation, you know, by playing USC, knowing they brought everybody back and they're loaded uh, and going out there first. Um, you know, playing Indiana in, uh, in Atlanta. And Indiana will be, I think, by the time they get to us, a top 25 team. Um, so, and there's, a, you know, there's obviously, we play Notre Dame in New York. Nobody wants to play Notre Dame. Playing Notre Dame in New York is, is harder from a fan base than playing with South Bend. Notre Dame will have more fans in New York than they'll get at South Bend. It'd be easier to play them there. It's to stay relevant. It's to stay relevant. It's to give my kids, tell my kids a message, I believe in you. I don't care who we're playing. I don't care. I believe in you. You came here to try to win a championship. You came here to get it to a Final Four. Um, if I don't schedule hard, then I obviously am concerned that we're not good enough. And we ain't afraid. Hey, Bruce. Uh, Jared Redd against Out of the Rebels on 24-7 Sports. Obviously having a former assistant coach and a player transfer within the conference. Um, just what's almost getting into those two guys? And what was it like having a father-son duo on the same team at the major college level? Well, Stephen Pearl and I are, are a father-son duo. We've been father-son for a long time. It was great to, it's been great to share, you know, so much of uh, uh, so much of uh, you know, what are your life's greatest moments, whatever they are in your own personal life, to get the chance to share them with family is unbelievable, uh, whether it's a championship or the birth of a child or whatever it would be. So that father-son thing is wonderful. Um, I'm just so happy that at the end of Alan Flanagan's career, he was playing great basketball. Um, I, I got to tell you, I'm very proud of, of my team from a year ago. Um, people ask me, what kind of year did you have last year? I said, you know, we had a good year. We had a good year. Um, we didn't have a great year. We had a good year. Um, you know, we, uh, if, we'd have, if we'd have held on to the lead at, against Houston in Birmingham, then we'd go good goes to great because Houston was the number two team in the country. We had them by 10. We missed 17 free throws in the game. We didn't finish the job. But we were good enough as the sixth or seventh best team in our league to go in the NCAA tournament and play Houston, who was the number two team in the country, and we had them. And we were right there. Um, and so I was just very, very proud of our team. We don't do that without Alan Flanagan playing the best basketball at the end of his career at Auburn. Bruce, Kevin Skarbinski with the SEC blog. Appreciate the shout out, first of all. Uh, secondly, you said you love your front court, but your best teams have been elite in the back court. Your, your true freshman signee, Aiden Holloway, how has he adapted so far? And Auburn fans are used to seeing the likes of Jared Harper and Sharif Cooper. Can he be mentioned at some point in that same sense? Well, I think, you know, your, your quarterback play is pretty important in the SEC, right? And so I've got – it's the only position that we're young at uh, with Trey Donaldson and Aiden Holloway. You know, but Trey was a, uh, was a football player, was a strong safety, uh, and he could have gone played high major football at Ohio State or Auburn or Alabama or anywhere, Florida, anywhere. And he's, he's, he's one of my point guards. And so that's a tough kid. Uh, and, a, and a great, great competitor. Uh, he could, they can both really shoot it. They can both shoot it as well as any of the point guards I've had. The question is, will they play make as well? Will they defend as well? Can they lead a team as well? And that's a lot of that stuff is just to, to be determined. Um, they're both very capable. Aiden's got some special in him. Um, and uh, I think he's got, you know, from a standpoint of being a gamer. And, and, and Trey's got some toughness and leadership in him. And they're both going to play. Uh, this is Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. What does it mean to bring the Auburn basketball brand to the Rocket City for the, to, to come back to Huntsville and play UNC Asheville on December the 13th? And also, I know you've been back to our city you're recruiting two prominent student athletes at Huntsville High and Buckhorn, but what does it mean to bring Auburn and bring, to bring them back to Huntsville? Nice try to get me to step into something which would get me in trouble with, uh, with the compliance. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not jumping into there. Um, all right, but, uh, um, you know, we, we have, uh, um, we went down to South Alabama and played, uh, in Mobile, 
uh, we started playing in Birmingham when I first got the job because, you know, I wanted to be able to, we have great do donors and alumni throughout the state and, and no greater than in Huntsville. And so we've been trying to get up there. It just hasn't been an opportunity. Uh, and, then, and then we just created and, and we're playing UNC Asheville, who's an NCAA tournament team from a year ago. And uh, the game's already sold out, like a hard sellout. Like, go on StubHub right now and try to go get a ticket for that game. I guarantee you, it's, it, it'll be, it's, it's like 250, 300 bucks uh, for, a really, for a decent seat. Uh, every game sold out at Auburn. Every game sold out at Auburn. And one of the things that I'm really, really happy about and pleased about, and you're seeing this more and more in the SEC, is Auburn's beginning to travel. Like, we are, our fans are traveling with our program. And, um, and so whether it's Huntsville or whether there's some other places in the league where there's some opportunity to get some tickets, and I just think those environments where you've got sort of like, not that's a neutral site, but there's fans, it's a little bit more like SEC football. So we're excited about it, and we're very excited about the quality of our opponent. Hey, Bruce, so Ryan Black with the Courier Journal. Uh, I know you said there a few minutes ago that no one feels sorry for John Calipari with all the five-star freshmen, but the truth is, you know, a freshman-laden team has not been successful come March in, in, since the 2015 Duke team. So do you think it can work? You might not feel sorry for him, but do you think it can work and be successful with such a freshman-heavy team? Yeah, ab absolutely. He's got some tremendous players, tremendous kids, you know, guys that are going to be lottery, um, and, 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 and he's going to coach them up. And, look, they're going to guard. They're going to they're play for each other. Um, and, and typically, you know, those teams get better throughout the season. Um, because they are, you know, they are so young. The challenge is they always play a tough schedule during the year, um, and so you can't really know what they're going to be like, you know, come, you know, come March. But, um, you know, I, 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 again, I think that uh, um, if I had the ability to recruit, you know, you know, five stars at every position, um, I wouldn't be turning them down just to, just to uh, do something different. John's going to do it his way. Last question right here. Bruce, JoeGoodmanAL.com. Uh, you're a public figure. You've been critical of the current administration in the White House. Do you have any political aspirations? <laughs> no. Guys, you guys know that I stay in with Israel, but I'm very pleased today to talk about Auburn basketball. And I really am grateful for all the questions about Auburn basketball today. You guys could, we could talk about other stuff at other times, but I want to put all the attention on my kids and my program and the conference. And so I'm really grateful for your questions today. Okay. Thank you, coach. Okay. Thank you.